Hi everyone, just a few notes about uh, the lecture last week to help you with doing your peer review. So the whole point about linear regression is it tells us how much our dependent variable will change if some predictor variable changes, some independent variable changes. In this case we're interested in how our, how our IQ scores, our independent variable, uh, is affecting our average grades of our children. So that would be our Y, our dependent variable, or our response variable. And this formula gives us a, a regression line, which is the line of best fit. And this formula on the page here is the one that we normally used. It has got a constant term, and then a term that depends on X. And the B in front of the X is the coefficient that tells us how strong the relationship is. Well, how steep the relationship is. Okay, so if... if X changes very rapidly with Y, then B will be a big number. If uh, it changes only very slowly, then B will be a small number. Okay. So Y is a predicted value of the dependent variable for each child, child say. And uh, the coefficient with X, the, co the uh, slope of the regression line is the regression coefficient. The X's are the values that our independent variable takes and this is the intercept term sometimes called constant for fit. We can see all these things here you see so B would be a number that describes how steep this slope is okay and the intercept is the point if you imagine the IQ going all the way down here until it gets to zero it's the value that the grade would have when IQ gets to zero Okay, it turns out to be something like minus 20 or whatever. The dots here, of course, are all our separate uh, grade values for each of our children and their corresponding IQ values. Uh, there might be a particular little outlier there highlighted and that shows up in our regression residuals. Okay, so these are the, the distances from our line of best fit from our regression line. Okay. And uh, we can plot this in different kinds of ways. If you can imagine that we get all of the separate uh, residuals, these separate distances away of each point from this red line, and then treat them as a, as a sample in their own right, then we can do things like make a QQ plot of those values. The little dotty lines either side of our, our, our normal line is giving us a range in which we would expect uh, to find uh, a random sample that's sort of not perfect, but it's nearly perfect. It's as good as that's our confidence interval in our QQ plot. You see, there's one or two points which are potential outliers at this extreme tail here of high values. We might expect the res uh, uh, scatter plot of the residuals just to show no particular relationship because the residuals, if they properly explained by the regression line, should just have no particular uh, uh, structure to them once they're left over. And then this Cook's distance measure, which is uh, calculated by some crafty formula or other, uh, it gives a score for each point, which as it gets larger is uh, an indication of, of, um, of whether or not a value might be considered an outlier or not. And the, va the values of Cook's distance are plotted up the side here. And uh, there's a, a rule of thumb that uh, once the a Cook's distance measure, which is given here for each point, exceeds uh, the number given by this formula, 4 divided by n minus uh, the number of parameters minus 1, uh, is uh, a point if you get a larger value of that at Cook's distance, then that might be an outlier. And in this case, the formula works out to be 0.047. And you can see that this point number 25 here might be an outlier. And it doesn't really, it's not, it's circle day, so it doesn't really look like one. But this is a case of a point that has uh, a high uh, high leverage or a, one of the other measures. And it's shown up that this, this is uh, quite an influence, influential point. Okay, so it might be worth moving there. But on the other hand, it's not it's not miles away from from this 
this point so it's not sticking out like a sore thumb. So you can or can't remove that one. Try it both ways to see what the answer is. So apart from uh, looking at the diagnostics, you can look at, uh, of course, the statistics that have been calculated. The ANOVA tells us what the overall uh, situation of the, of the whole regression approach is. It's telling us whether uh, the intercept and the regression together are different from as if there was no, no statistical influence at all. Okay, so it's testing it's testing the effect of any change compared to just nothing happening at all. And we can see that uh, there's a very significant effect. So it's definitely worth doing a regression in some form. And then the regression model itself is broken down into its separate parts. And of course, it's got two coefficients in a way. It's got this intercept term. This is the constant, the A in the A plus BX thing. And the estimate tells us the value that's been worked out that goes into that formula. And then the estimate of the coefficient that goes with x is this one here. Okay, so that would be the b, as it were. The regression modeler also works out the standard error that's associated with these estimates. Okay, and you can see that this one's quite large, 12. So you can see if you can imagine this as a as a point with error bars on either side, the error bars would be of this kind of order. So plus or minus two standard errors, it would encompass the value zero, you see. So really, you can't tell whether this intercept is going through zero or not. And this is what this says. It says that uh, the probability that this value is different to zero is actually not that small. It's actually not significant. Okay. So you could remodel it with the inter intercept taken out set equal to zero and that would be saying that you'd think that somebody that had a zero IQ should get a zero grade and that sort of makes sense doesn't it? The next coefficient is an estimate of the slope of our uh, regression line, the slope of our red line and tells us that going one step along in the x direction in the IQ direction changes our grade by 0.72 ish uh, it has a relatively small error, and this corresponds to having a, a large t value and a very small p. It's not exactly zero, but it's close to zero. Okay. The other number of interest is the r squared value, which tells us something about how much of the variance has been explained. If you remember the uh, scatter plot, well, if I go back one, I can show you it. Can't you? you see? There's quite a lot of noise around this data. We're quite confident that this line is a real slope. That's what this is telling us. Okay, the p-value slope is low, so it's definitely a significant regression slope. But it's quite noisy. There's quite a lot of variability left, so we haven't explained much of the variability because most of it is just noisiness in the in the data. If these dots are very close to this line, then the r-squared value would be much higher. It can go as high as close to 1, which means 100%. So to get your percent variance explained, you do multiply it by 100. Okay, so when you're looking for your uh, peer review, make sure that the slope is interpreted correctly. And you can work out uh, what the average change in the grade score per IQ point is. Okay, so every point that uh, you get an increase in IQ, as I just said, increases by 0.72%. You can also interpret the intercept. Now, if you take it literally, it tells you what the value is when x is equal to 0. But remember, this didn't turn out to be significant. So look out for somebody who spotted that. They would be a really clever one, so they should get a good grade. Okay, And especially if they've gone on to do uh, a second fit, having detected that this might not be significant, and included a model where the intercept has been taken out. Okay, so that's where the intercept is false in the modeler. Okay, and the regression equation pr prediction. This is when you want to work out uh, a grade for a particular child whose IQ you know is 108. So you can use this value to put it into the equation. We all know what all the parts of the equation are. We know the slope is this that goes with the x, their IQ. We calculate all this thing and what we've solved then is a value that we can tell 
is what their grade is. In this case, for this child, the sum works out 55.2. Seems very small, doesn't it? But that's what it's worked out at. Hmm. Okay. And the R squared value is this amount of variability explained using the model. Thank you very much. Is that the last slide? Yes.